yet. Um, the idea is that once this panel's all welded on, this thing, um, I was going to drop it down off the uh, off the axle stand which it was on, or it's been on for a little while, and then spin the car around so that the back end is facing what is actually the front of the garage, which is there. Because I have a little bit more room there and a spare mobile bench because um, at that stage I'm going to to check properly from the rear end for any more rust on this side and actually the other side. Uh, I'm going to whiz off the back axle and just for a little bit of a break from doing the welding, once I've assessed it kind of thing, I was uh, I was actually going to do some uh, brakes and stuff because I'm rebuilding all of the, the brakes and things on the back axle. So I would have made a bit of a change. So uh, yeah, I want the car turned around to do that. And then I thought, uh, well actually I might as well do it before I actually finally weld all this up because the car's going to sit slightly differently on its wheels, isn't it? And it means I can, uh, while I've still got some wiggle room in the end of that panel, I can um, make sure that that gap isn't going to change. So, uh, kind of a last minute thing. Uh, it's time to uh, whiz it round and, um, yeah, swap ends. And there we go. British Leyland Beast off its, uh, off its axle stands. Yes, it's leaning to one side. Probably did that when it was new. Uh, but it's had that spring extended for three months or two months or whatever it is. So I'm not too worried. Um, that's all got to come off anyway. Oh, we want to see the state of my panel graphs now that I've put it onto all four wheels. Let you see the state of this. Yeah, as if. Look at that. Dead straight. Door just needs a little bit of adjusting, obviously, but it didn't move an inch. Someone was telling me that they've got to do two sets of sills on one of these. And I made the comment on, on my last video, or on the... the um, the comment section that this didn't move at all when I took the uh, the sill off this side, the whole sill section. Uh, probably wouldn't want to do it with a, an open top, obviously, but um, yeah, and even with taking all, you've seen everything that I've done to disconnect these wings or undo these wings, and that's with it all up on one axle and not on its proper wheel. And it, it obviously didn't move from putting the weight on it to attain the weight off or do the way around. Anyway, I'm gonna show this out of the garage, turn it around and then, uh, that's it really, and that's it. <laughs> right, there we go. There we go, and there it was done. So the car's now facing the other way around. There's the front of the garage there. And let's see, now actually back on its wheels, temporarily as it happens. But there we go, car turned around. So first job first. Um, just got all that. Uh, fit it up and uh, we'll weld that in and once that's done we might uh, start on the axle so some welding first and some fitting up Big long side seam, pretty much tacked in. Still lots of work to do on the corners and stuff. I'll show you this end and obviously the other end. But the uh, it's kind of held its shape okay, I think. Here we go. Not a little bit of grinding hammer and dolly in one fix. Certainly better than what was there before, which in some cases was actually nothing. Uh, this end is going to need a little bit of jiggery pokery, so I need to check what the other side looks like and then we'll work out something here. We'll weld something in. No, I'm not just going to bludge, fill it in a bit of fiberglass in. Not doing that. Uh, we'll work on straightening all this edge in then. Any other bits and any holes. Um, I think I'll leave that for a minute and I'll just go into um, to do the seaming on the inside. That's a really heavy seam, so I can actually just go straight along that seam. Make it all nice and uh, straight. Gives us something really solid to work off and then we'll finish off the rest of the tacking. And um, yeah, that's it. We'll do that next, I think.
I'm actually getting away with putting a bit more heat into this corner of the panel because this part here is actually quite thick and the edge I'm actually welding is folded so it's actually thicker and a little bit stronger. So this isn't gonna warp anywhere and uh, it all gets covered by fabric anyway. Um, obviously it's gonna be painted and the welds are all gonna be ground down but a lot of it's gonna be covered. Uh, one part which is a bit interesting is where I've misfit the panel a little bit and I'll just show you that now. There you go, that's it there. You see there's a gap where the, um, the top panel is actually aligned. I've just cut too much off the inner panel. So I'm gonna to need to a little bit of gap fill in there. I can't really, I don't think I can get behind it with a brass rod. Uh, but we'll see what I can do with just a little bit of MIG filling and see how I get on. It's not a huge gap, it's only, what's that about? I suppose it's about four mil. Uh, but a couple of passes with the welder should see that done okay. I'll um, I'll put you on um, on the tripod just for a closer look at how I'm gonna do that and we'll, uh, we'll both see how we'll get on, I guess. Hopefully you can see there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weld up either side of that hole first and um, to make it nice and strong. So I'll probably take it from this tack here, work along to here, this side, work along to here so it's, um, it's less chance of moving around. And then we'll see if we can't um, do something about the, uh, the hole. Just try not to knock the camera while I'm moving the welding torch. What I'm trying to do, by the way, while I'm welding, and I ain't any professional welder, but what I try to do is um, rather than just go straight into the panel, you know you're supposed to um, do dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here, and alternate and whatever. As this is a bit thicker, I can actually basically join up the dots. So what I'm doing, when I, I weld one dot, which obviously leaves me with a weld puddle, as that's drying, I move about half, maybe two thirds across that puddle, fire the end of the tip into the actual last blob, that I just done and then draw it across very slightly. Don't know if that's the right way to do it. Sometimes you can do it while just the force of the wire coming out of the gun. If you touch on this weld, maybe here, and it just the force of the wire coming out of the gun will push the weld that way slightly. So you're actually using the weld to put the metal and heat up the panel rather than firing the torch and the end of the wire straight into the metal because I, I find that tends to blow holes. So you're almost making a heat sink, if you like, as you go along. You'll see what I mean. I'll hold the, the gun at a bit of an odd angle, but you should be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, that's about as far as I can do with that. So what I'm going to do now is try and do a small pass along here, which will put some metal into this panel. Because uh, obviously I'm going to be putting a lot of heat in here now because I'll be doing multiple passes just to fill up this gap. Uh, but the first lot can be quite quick passes just to thicken up the metal so it can actually take a little bit more heat without me blowing holes in it. Uh, <laughs> let's see how... Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it? Let's see how we get on. Well, I do apologise for that. The um, the camera, the iPhone, decided that it was absolutely full, and I was sitting here talking the, the lens off it and um, demonstrating a magnificent piece of welding. If I say so myself, actually, I'm only joking. It did fill it all in, and I was chatting all the way through, but unfortunately, the iPhone decided to pack in. Cheers. Uh, right, there'll be loads of other bits and pieces to show you anyway. I'll um, I'm going to weld up this bit and then wrap it on the end. I might even put a little piece in there because that's all that's quite rusty, isn't it? Let's cut that piece out and stick a piece in. And um yeah, so I'm gonna put you on time lapse for the next bit of welding. Just in case the camera decides not to film it and I chat it away for two or three minutes for no reason. Onwards! Right, 
so this is the top of that weld I've just done. There you go. Right along the top, so nicely seamed up. So I'm a bit mucky though, because I think there was some filler or some paint left on the top of the panel now. Now again, I am I'm no welder. I'm just doing this for fun. If someone has a better way of doing this, tell me in the comments and I'll do it that way. A lot of this is guesswork and just learning off YouTube, you know, just doing the best. Right, I think um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the main welds done, all the, all the, the legwork, all the long stuff done, and then I'll come back and tidy up the ends. So I think the next thing to get absolutely solid and sturdy is going to be this here where it's all pinned together with the uh, the panel, um, panel clamps. Uh, right, so I'll set you up on a tripod and see what we can do for this. Right, the first part I want to deal with is just here because um, all of these seams are absolutely almost perfectly level actually between obviously this and the car. Here, uh, I'm not sure whether this is raised slightly or that's a bit low. I think that's a bit low. So I'm just going to get a pry bar just to push out this thinner metal. Actually, that, this seems thinner than this, don't know why. I'm going to push this metal out slightly just to meet this, get a tack in so that I know that this seems pretty good. Um, maybe hammer uh, a couple of this little bits down here. Um, get this nice and straight and then we'll start on this end bit. Right, I've just brought you back a little bit so you can uh, see what's going on. So I've got this thing, which is um, basically from Aldi, what can you say? Probably £10 for a set of five. So all I'm going to do, as you said, this part... Actually, I think, looking at it, I think that weld has probably brought this out a little bit proud, This the, uh, the new panel. So what I'm going to do... Uh, let's find the body hammer. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to... I'm actually just going to feel this. That's okay, that's not bad. That's really slightly there. We're not any great shakes. Uh, that's not far out. Now this is quite raised. See, this, this bit here on this, this panel, the lower panel, is actually a bit proud. So I'm just going to tap it down slightly. horrible spitty sound you can hear there's probably a little bit of paint inside the panel just interfering with the weld slightly or it could even be a little bit of um, rust um, there's something mucky there that the welder doesn't like ah I see what it is Ah, okay, that's interesting. Um, I obviously didn't realise. Okay, well, obviously saw all that sparking and banging. You found that at the same time as I did. That's actually lead. So the card that this came off was obviously lead loaded at the factory. I had no idea. That's what all the spitting was. It was the um, it was the lead melting. Uh, right, well that's going to cause a problem. So now I've got to basically grind the crap out of this area here to get all of the um, all of the old lead off. That's interesting. I'm glad it happened on camera because. Uh, it's something I've only encountered once or twice before. Right, well I'll grind all this off and then we'll get back to welding. In fact, before I grind it off, yeah, I'll just show you. See, there was lead in the um, in the joint then, I had no idea. You see it's melted. But um, yeah, it'll all grind off anyway. So we'll just get a wire wheel on it and grind it all off. And then we'll see where that panel lands up then. It's not the panel looked a bit thick. See, told you I didn't do this for a living. <laughs> go that's most of it off um if there's some along the back of the seam i don't care i'm going to cut this out anyway and do some more welding so i'll deal with that later because i'm actually going to de-seam this i don't care about this ridge i don't like the ridges anyway i think they're just traps for rust and um the one on this is actually kettled um but it's better than paying six or seven hundred quid for a whole new panel a little bit of work and this is the work i actually enjoy doing so you know there's not much point in me spending more money for a new panel to avoid the work that i'm doing this as part of my hobby of for with okay that sentence went a bit wrong but i'm sure you get the gist right let's try a bit more welding um i've got in my left hand an air blower with cold air from the compressor 
and it is cold. Um, uh, if you want to get technical, it's called the adiabatic cooling of, uh, of a gas, which is air. As it rapidly expands, it cools really, really quickly. And um, because it's coming out really, really cold, it's really good for cooling the steel down. So do a few welds with this, blast it with the cold air, stops the, um, the heat spreading too far into the panel. And it's all good, it's gonna warp a little bit. But um, this is actually quite strong, this piece of steel. But it's good practice anyway, because when I do the, the thinner metal along the side, I've got to do this. So a couple of welds, I'll see how it's going, maybe three, whatever, and then give it a good cool with this. Takes a little bit longer, but it's um, better than having a, you know, like a, a panel full of cellulite, if you like. <laughs> right, onwards. thinner like it will be on the side I wouldn't get away with four or five welds I'd be probably getting away with two maybe three but it's um, quite chunky this metal because it's quite near to fold as well um, so maybe I can get away with three or four maybe five if I can see the metal's not moving anywhere Shown you how, how these work, you may well know. Um, they're pretty common things just to clamp these clamps to get the panels together. Uh, if you haven't seen them before, uh, this is basically what you get. You get one of these, and normally they come with a piece of square stock that goes through that hole. But I've lost the one off this one, so I just cut myself a piece of round stock, just round bar. Um, now, the idea the idea is that you loosen this until. There you go, until you can push it through the panel. So you actually push it through the gap in the panel, like that. Now I'll see if I can do this and keep the thing in front of the camera. So we have two pieces of steel that we want to um, weld together. As you push it through the panel, you can see, if I can do this, this first take this, so let's see. What you've got on the other side is basically that, okay? You pass your hand behind the panel, put this through there. Okay, you see that? And you tighten it. I tell you what, if this works first time, uh, round of applause please, because I haven't even practiced this. Right, there we go, you just tighten it off. So obviously what you're seeing on the other side is this, okay? Now as you tighten that, it draws that blade in, this this uh, this blade here, and pulls the, the peg tight on the other side. So what you actually end up with is um, two sheets of metal, i.e. these, and they should actually be, if I can hold it steady, it should actually be level. Because the bottom of this square actually keeps them level. There you go. Problem is, once you finish with it, all you can do is undo that. And then pull it through this side. And um, as long as you can get to the other side of the panel to retrieve the little bar, that's fine. But if you can't, <coughs> you're a bit knackered. Um, anyway, so that's exactly what, that's what's actually behind that panel. There. Right, well... Okay, so what I'm doing first, as I said, these normally pull these panels together, but I've got a feeling this panel is a little bit thicker than this one. So what's happened is this is uh, the bottom of this has gripped this bottom panel. It's not quite gripping the top one. So what I might need to do is just push down on here just to hinge this out so it's level. And I'll do that pretty much by eye. Maybe tapping this would do something. Let's have a look. Obviously, fitting these up before you weld it is, is the absolute key, so. If not, I'll just push it out to the inside, it's not a big deal. Is that level? That is, indeed. Right, that bit there is now level. So I'm just going to put the weld in. When it gets something nice and straight, I like to get a tack in, you know? It's still there. Um, I'm not really going to cool these tacks off because it's only one weld. It's not hot enough to do anything to metal this this thing. In theory, he said. Right, let's see how we get on. There we go. 
And what I'm going to do is just loosen this slightly. Move it along a little bit. Tighten this up again. Let's have a feel. Who where this is. Is that level? Can't really tell. Let's get the edge of a ruler. There you go. Just use one of these little cheapy metal set squares. Is that level? No, I would say that. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. Tack time. And obviously there's a fair gap between these panels, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way of um, filling that in. Uh, okay, I think we can afford to take this one out, so just, I can just get my hand behind, not touch the hot panel, that'll just heat it up. Now I've got hold of the bar that you saw before, the small bar that slips inside, so I'll take that out from inside, ease that out, and there you go, that's the bar that normally comes with them. So we've retrieved this one, which is good. I need to buy some more of these when we go down to the, um, the NEC, the classic car show, in, uh, in November this year, which I hope you all go to, because it's positively marvellous. We always end up buying far too much crap, but hey, you've got to spend money on something, haven't you? What is it? ABE says. Tap, tap, tap. Let's have a look. Yes, I'll do. Now it's quite a big gap this here. Um, a little bit wider than I would have wanted, but it's where the panel fit was. You know, I did my best. So let's see if I can put a little blob onto here, little blob onto there, join the two together, and then we'll work out how we're going to fill the hole later. Success. Right. Screw this, ease it down a little bit, put him there. So you see, it takes a while doing this. I don't know how people make money doing restoration if they do it properly, you know, because it's um, well, it takes a lot of time, you know. Let's just check again to see if that's a level. Level enough. Now I can get behind there with a the hammer and dolly later on, so. If it's not quite perfect, trust me, it's not going to be quite perfect. <laughs> it's just not. Um, then I can hammer and delete it straight. And also got to put a great big whacking petrol cap here as well, which will hide some of this. So, uh, right, tack this bit now. Those of you who have an aversion to flashing lights, uh, I probably should have told you 20 minutes ago because you're probably a equivalent heap on the floor already. I do apologise. Um, I don't know why I'm laughing at, it's actually not funny, that is it? Right, I might cut that out. Okay, so, once we've done that, we can take this out. Same as before, it is, same type of thing. Just put the bar in there. And again, how are we looking? Is this level? I mean, yeah, this is going to get a fair old dollop of filler anyway. Nothing too stupid and, um, you know, the correct filler. But, you know, I'm not working on Lord Lucan's Rolls Royce here, you know what I mean, or Bonnie and Clyde's go-kart. It's, uh, it's a 1970s MG. It's going to be nice, but, you know, there's limits. Right, so I'm going to put you on time-lapse anyway for the rest of this. You get the gist. look at what's going on um, you can see I don't think you can see there's a gap you see there's a little light behind the panel there there's a gap between those two panels where I basically didn't fit these up too well you know, I'd do my best but it didn't quite work um, and that gap is it's going to be three mil or something I'll like just put that next to it there you go you can see it's about three mil can you see that now the way I'm filling it is you can see when I did really want to put the tacks in you can see the tack here and I've uh, basically want to bead off the tack. And what I'm doing, I'm firing the next weld into the previous one. And then as it starts to, as it starts to spread out, uh, I'm leaving enough heat in the tack uh, to, uh, to fuse itself to either panel and then just stop the heat then. 
and then pause for a second and then fire it again. So what it's actually doing is um, basically going between the two panels and I'm using, again, the tack itself, the actual blob itself, to weld to the panel. Obviously, if I try and fire a weld into the gap, that's exactly what that's gonna do. It's gonna go straight through the gap, isn't it? Otherwise, it's gonna go through the middle. But if I can actually aim it there, as you can see, just into the end of that weld, and possibly even draw it a little bit this way, or just watch it spread out, and then the heat in the tack actually welds itself to the panel. Um, hope that's clear. And again, I'm no professional welder. This is just something I've tried and it worked. So, you know, if it helps you, then fine. There's probably a better way of doing it. I just don't know what it is. Uh, right, I'll continue this. I'll put you on um, time lapse now just to get this finished. Fully welded now. Um, as I say, the camera just makes welds look horrible, but um, it's actually not bad at all. This is going to drop a filler, but there you go. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not shy. Uh, right, so can't put off any longer. Looks like it's going to be the big side seam, and um, yeah, this is just going to be more of the same. So I'll do it all on uh, on time lapse. It's just going to be weld, um, cool it, move along, weld, cool it, move along. And um, yeah, hopefully not warp the panel too much. It always warps a little bit, but you know, it's basically some bloody big rusty holes. It was what was there before, isn't it? Right on walls. Okay, right. That was a fair old task. So that's the first um, line of wells laid along the, um, the big long panel. Here we go. There's obviously a lot of um, hammering and dollying and stuff to do, but um, it's actually pretty good. It's not all lumpy and bumpy. Obviously, I've got to grind all this down and take care about putting some heat into that pile with um, the grinder. But um, hey, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, I'll just give you a look so you can see what you've got to on that. There you go. Yeah. Relatively, yes, no, no, not far off. Right, uh, I'm just going to have a look at the other side to see how this end terminates. We'll make up this end properly and then we'll do some grinding. What I could do is just cut along this edge, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to leave a little bit of strength in there because I'm just going to have to weld a piece in here. The idea is that I'm going to bend this edge over. That's going to give me a return, effectively, which hopefully, hopefully, will make the edge a little bit stronger and easier to weld. So I'm just, let me see behind you. This is my dolly. So I'm just hammer this edge over a little bit. Difficult to get into some of these spaces. Let's try a different shape, Dolly. Yeah, I'll try that one. Oh, a bit better. Yeah. Let's see what that's left us. 
Here we go. So you can see I've just got that tack in on the edge there now. So um, I need to just uh, tap it out a little bit so it matches the door a little bit better. And then we'll, um, we'll fabricate a small piece to go in here to make the ledge at the top. I'm actually not putting the uh, chromes back on the side of this car as well, so I've got to make a reasonable job of making this reasonably straight or very straight. Right, onwards. Right, so what I've done here is I've actually welded in a plate uh, behind um, this panel. It's a very small one, and that's uh, made this now part of the back panel because it was just a blade, if you remember. Uh, we've just got to finish off the welding along this seam, we'll put in the piece for the top, and then we'll dress all the welds back here so we're not doing them with filler later. Right, let's keep on going. Now obviously this is all very fiddly, but so if I can do this on camera with the other hand. Here's a small piece I've made for here. Okay, there you go. So I'm just going to lay that over there, I'm drawing around it on the panel, and I'll cut it out, allowing a little bit on this top seam for the fact that this is going to drop a little bit when we cut it into that groove. Right, uh, this should be the last piece to make this end uh, match up to the door. Right, here we have a new piece just welded in here. Uh, I did film it, but my iPhone decided that nobody else would want to see it and just didn't record it. Don't know why. Right, a little bit of grinding and I'll bring you back. So this is with that, uh, that small piece welded in. Uh, the end has also been ground down just to get the correct shape there. So all of that's metal and I'll obviously finish it off with a little bit of filler. When the time comes, you can see I've put in a few more blobs of well there just to um, fill in a few more gaps. There's one more piece I need to put in, which is down here. And that's this door jam pretty much completed then. Uh, obviously it's going to need some filler to make it all really nice, but you can see the main body of it is all steel before we even start with the filler. Right, so I think we'll leave that there for this time. Uh, that, that panel substantially welded in now. There's still a couple of bits to do. You can see there's across the back of this light cluster mounting here. I need to finish this end off. Obviously grind down all these welds. And then um, one or two other things I'll do. I'll show you those next time. Uh, but I think that's probably enough for uh, for one welding session. I'm sure you get a fed up with seeing the, uh, the welding. Right, that's it. Um, more next time. Bye.